Today on Mrs McLean Makes, I'm going to be showing you how to make indigo dye. I shout, don't I? So, I'm going to show you how to make an indigo dye bath using traditional indigo dye from India. So you could go to the shops and buy indigo dye ready-made, and all you need to do is pour it into some water and add your fabric. That's totally fine and really, really easy to do, but I like to make my indigo dye from scratch using um, natural indigo powder which I source from India. Natural indigo dye is really eco-friendly. Um, it's plant-based dye and when it's extracted it uses does use a lot of water um, which can be bad for the environment but actually what they do with the residue water that they use is they use it on their farms and for their crops um, which means it's part of a big ecosystem which makes it eco-friendly. Um, also one of the other reasons is I love using the natural dye is because um, I've forgotten. <laughs> indigo dye is great for dyeing lots of different types of materials. So everything from cotton, silk, to leather, to even mother of pearl, to wood. So many different things which means you can be even more creative with it. And for me I also feel like you get a lot richer colour and um, it's just a more interesting process. First thing we need to do is measure the soda ash. Soda ash is sodium carbonate. We need 20 grams. Next we're going to put the soda ash into a Pyrex jug and add 20 millilitres of boiling hot water and stir it all in. Okay. We're going to add the indigo dye to this but we need to make the indigo paste first. We need just 10 grams. Once you've weighed out your indigo powder, we're going to pour that into a different bowl and then add some hot water just to create a paste. It really smells. Indigo dye is a bit of a difficult dye to deal with because it's not soluble in water, which is why we have to um, create a chemical reaction, which is professionally called reduction oxidization reaction which means that we're creating this um, paste and using the sodium carbonate and then we're going to add lots of water and then what happens with once the fabric's in the water and it comes out of the dye bath it creates um, it reacts with oxygen in the air and that's what gives it the indigo the bold bright indigo blue color if it feels a bit sandy that's fine, just try and break down all those sandy pieces as best as you can. So it might feel a bit chalky, but that's what we're trying to get rid of and just make it a bit smooth. Once you've mixed the indigo dye with the water, bring back your soda ash and you're just going to simply pour the indigo mixture in, give it a really good stir and then we're going to leave it for half an hour. The next step, we're going to pour about two litres of boiling hot water into a saucepan. Sodium carbonate or soda ash, you want to add about a third of a teaspoon, so not too much, a little bit of a stir. Please, please, please make sure you use stainless steel, otherwise it's going to dye anything that you use. So stainless steel is fine, anything else don't use it, otherwise it'll end up being very blue. Next you're going to add just cool water to bring down the temperature and you want to make sure you leave enough space to be adding your fabrics to the dye bath as well. If you want to know, the typical temperature for the water should be about 45 degrees, but if you don't have a thermometer, don't worry, just add in your cool water so the water isn't boiling and you should be absolutely fine. Next we're going to add the indigo dye to the water, so it's creating your dye bath. I'm going to show you how to do it as, a lot, as it's a lot easier to explain. Put the Pyrex jug in, don't just pour the dye out, you want the dye to come from the jug into the water really gently and really slowly. When you take it out, if there are any bits that haven't dissolved of the indigo dye, that's fine. Just leave it in the Pyrex dish and you can use it later to add to your next batch if you want it. <laughs> Was that good? Just to give you a little bit of knowledge about the dye, the indigo molecule does not produce the blue colour until it's been oxidised. The indigo powder needs to be dissolved in an alkaline bath with the oxygen removed. And this is what spectrolyte does. So we're going to measure 15 grams of spectrolyte. 
I'm now going to add the spectrolite to the, the dye bath. So just sprinkle it on top. Leave it for about 30 minutes and then we'll give it a stir. Once you've added the spectrolite, you need to wrap the saucepan in towels to keep it at an even temperature. Again, if you want the technical temperature, try and keep it at 45 degrees. If you aren't worrying about using a thermometer, just keep it wrapped up with a couple of towels around the saucepan and that should keep it at an even temperature for the chemical reaction to happen. Once you've left it for half an hour, give it a really gentle stir and then put the lid on again and leave it for another half an hour. You'll see that the reaction is still taking place as all the bubbles are forming on top. That's how to make a natural indigo dye bath. In my next few episodes, I'm gonna show you a few shibore techniques, which is a dyeing technique to create really um, beautiful patterned fabrics. Mm -hmm.